Our Father in heaven, the Lord, we want to thank you for another day of life. We want to thank you, Lord, for this place we can come to this morning and worship you. Father, we ask this morning that you help us, Lord, to be obedient to your precious word. Help us, Lord, to be submissive to your will, Lord. As we come to you in prayer, Lord, we ask that you help us. To not ask me this, Lord, but do the things and say the things, Lord, that be pleasing to you. And that this prayer would come up before you, Lord, this sweet smell and savor. Father, we ask this morning that you remember those this morning that couldn't be here. We ask, Lord, that you encourage and strengthen the sick and afflicted and the nursing home, the hospital, and those that are home now. Father, we ask, Lord, that you comfort those that they have just taken a loved one out of this life, Lord. And we ask, Lord, that you help them get through this trouble and, and, and grieve them. <coughs> Father, we ask this morning that you help us to do the things here, Lord, that be pleasing to you. And we ask, Lord, that you. Bless everything it's said or done for us, for us, for us, for us, name. Father, we ask that you remember the lost and undone, Lord, touch your heart. Lord, let them know what they are for nature, and that they must be saved with grace. Lord, we ask yes. that those of us that are saved and have that blood to find their hearts. Lord, this morning, that we make that a priority on our list of things to do, that we'll spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Lord, help us to do those things with love. And sympathy in our hearts, Lord, for those that don't know you, Father. Help us to spread that word this morning, Father. We ask now, Lord, that you go with us to the Western service, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you come with us this morning to seek your presence above all things here this morning. Lord, come down and just bless us real good and help us to worship you, Lord, in the way we should. Lord, go with us down through the rest of the service, for it's in that precious name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.
to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. We, uh, we just had a famous day this week, didn't we not? Thanksgiving, I think that's a famous day. But there's also another day that I think the world is trying to make it more famous. They call it Black Friday. Black Friday. As I was thinking about Black Friday, I, I decided I wanted to Google. Boy, that Google wonderful. You can find anything you want to know, and I Googled. And you know what I found out? It, it, I was trying to wonder why they call it Black Friday. Now, what happened... Years ago, when they had Thanksgiving, the holiday on Thursday, many decided, you know what? I'm going back to work Friday. Now, praise the Lord, I didn't have to go back to work this Friday. But, you know, other places they had to go back to work, didn't they? And I was reading in 1951 in the issue of a, the, of a magazine called the Factory Management, they, they made a statement. They said, this is a day... The factory workers don't show up. And it's low production. And you know what it is? It's a black day. A black day. You know, uh, imagine they came to work that day. And they, they thought, well, <coughs> there's no one to run the lathe. Oh, such and such income, we, we can't run the punch press. Something says it come, we, we don't have anyone to weld today. It was a day that was considered black. Did you know that there's a black day coming? Yeah. There's a black day coming. One day you'll <coughs> you go to work. And they'll say, hey, where's such and such? They're not here today. And by the way, where's the one over there? Uh, how about such I don't see him here today. Right. Let's see what happened to him. So I don't know. Can you imagine even coming to the church service? Now, by the way, I pray that everybody's gone that day. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We'll talk about that in a minute here, but I'm going to tell you, one day you're coming to the church. But you know what? I'm confident you'll be shocked. There'll be folks that'll come into the church and say, Where's everybody? That's going to be a black day. Yep. Can you imagine waking up in your home and you look over there and you say, where's my, where's my wife? Where'd you go? Or maybe you wake up and say, well, there's my, where's my husband? Or you go in and, and I, I believe this is a day, a day that the Lord is going to take the same day, man. He's going to take us home. Amen. And you go into the, 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 in the nursery there and you go, where's my baby? By the way, babies are going to heaven. Amen. Yeah. Yes. And maybe they look there, maybe you've got a number of teenagers. And you look over at the teenagers and you look in the rooms there and say, two of them are gone. Where are they? I don't think we can imagine what kind of a day that's going to be. It's a black day, isn't it? Yeah. We, uh, there's a day that we talk about, we sing about it, it's called the rapture. Now there's a lot of debate, and I'm not here to debate and get into some doctrinal thing. Some will say, well, the word rapture is not in the Bible. And you know what? They're right. Did you know the word Bible's not in the Bible? Try finding it. But we use it all the time, don't we? Did you know the word Trinity is not in the Bible? I believe the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord. But I believe it, don't you? Yes. You'll find uh, the, the, the phrase, the Great Commission, is not in the Bible. I believe there's a Great Commission to go out into all the world. It's a Great Commission. Did you know the word mission or missionary is not in the Bible? But you know what? Praise God. The Lord, Lord has allowed us to help missionaries. We have on the back of our bulletin those that we help missionaries. Amen. 
Well, the word rapture is a word that's, uh, uh, again, there's a lot of debate on it. It's, yeah, you're right. It's not in the Bible. It's a Latin word. It's a Latin word means caught up. One day it's going to get caught up. It's something that's going to take place, and it's real. This, this text even that I just read is, is kind of debatable on whether it's the rapture. Now, the rapture, getting some, some, some teaching here a little bit, the rapture, I believe, takes, be, takes in place before a tribulation time. Yeah. The Lord's going to come back. His second coming comes after the tribulation. Okay? Now, there's a lot of debate on which one this is referring to. In fact, it is one time I thought it referred to the second. But I've kind of changed my mind. I, I really believe, and I can do that, amen. Now, uh, the reason I believe this is preferring the rapture is because it says this is like the days of Noah. And you know how the days of Noah were? It said they were marrying, they were given to marriage, they're eating, they were drinking, life was going on normal. I'm going to tell you, when the Lord comes back, the second coming, to send up his kingdom, you know what? Things will not be normal. Correct. There's going to be a, a tribulation time. And the, the seven years of the wrath of God is coming down. He's trying to wake up people. He desires that they might repent. And it's very sad in the book of Revelation. You'll find they repent and not. But you'll find that the, the sun will be dark and the moon will be dark. And you'll find it'll be a different time. The oceans, the fresh water, you'll find a third of it oh, will, be, will be destroyed. The, you'll find it's going to be an awful time. It's not going to be things as normal, folks. So that's why myself, but you know the fact is, whether you believe this is the rapture or you believe it's the second coming of Jesus Christ doesn't really bother me. But the fact is, there is going to be a separation. Correct. I think we can conclude that. And what an awful thought of this separation. And you know that's going to be a black day. It's going to be a dark day. Yesterday I asked Laura, I was dwelling on my message, and I said, give me that dark day paper. And she didn't know I was working on a message. You know the, the, the ads for the dark day, the black day, Black Friday? And she said, dark day. And uh, it is a dark day, this day I'm talking about. Yeah. And it's a day of separation. It's the way they don't show up. You don't, you don't see them. We find uh, the Bible is very clear about being a separation one day. It talks about there will be a separation of the sheep and the goats. And by the way, you better be a sheep. Yeah. Yeah. The sheep are put on the right hand, the goats on the left hand. And you want to be on that side or the sheep's side. There's going to be a separating and the Lord knows who is the sheep. He knows who are the goats. Now, I, I can't always tell, but God does know. You'll find the Bible said there'll be a separation at the white throne judgment. you find if your name's not written in the Lamb's Book of Life, it says you'll be cast in the lake of fire. And you know what that is? That separation from not just uh, all that good is God, it's the separation from God. Amen. There's a separation coming. <coughs> this, this text said there'll be two in the field. One will be at work, and all of a sudden you look, and they're gone. One will be at home, one will be, in the, one will, one, one will be uh, at home, and you'll be able to be, one will be in the field. One will be here, one will be there. One will be taken, so the other will be left. It sounds like a separation, don't it? You know, it's a dark day. Even the rich man of Lazarus, if you know the story of the rich man... And Lazarus, the rich man, had everything, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Lazarus, he just stood, stood up there in the end of the driveway just asking for a few crumbs. But you know, uh, one day they both died. Lazarus, praise God, it says the angels came and took him. Mm -hmm. One day I'm going to take that flight. Amen. The rich man said he opened his eyes. He didn't say the angel came to get him. Mm -hmm. He opened his eyes in torment. That's right. 
And by the way, you know what the story says? Between the two, he looked, he could see loudness over there, and he desired to get over there because he was comforted, but he said there was a gulf between them. There was a separation, and they could not get back together. Dark day. You know what? There was a day in my life I walked in darkness. Well, there was a day in my life I, it was dark. Didn't realize it. But you know what? Until I, someone told me about my sin, about my trouble, realized I was a sinner, I was headed for a devil's hell, I was in dark times, but praise God, they told me about Jesus. Amen. Aren't you glad you were heard about Amen. Jesus? might have been your grandma in a Sunday school class. Praise God, I remember I was in kindergarten and my grandma, she was a teacher, amen, and they tried to tell us the books of the Bible. They tried to tell us all the, all the things of Jesus, the wonderful stories, and what a wonderful thing it is to have somebody to tell you about Jesus. They didn't wait till I got to be high school. They want as soon as I was born, they were telling me about Jesus. Amen. Now we're going to have my, my little grandson with us this Week. He's going to spend the night uh, with us Tuesday night, uh, Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday, oh, oh Monday night too, uh, Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday he'll be here probably. Amen. And you know what I'm going to try doing? I'm going to call that little boy Papa. <laughs> He's one. Papa. He hasn't said Daddy yet. He said Mama. But I like by the end of the week for him to say, Papa. <laughs> hey, yeah. That's right. And uh, more than likely, he, there's a good chance he might be walking this week while he's with us. We don't know. But the fact is, you know what? You know what's more important than he knows Daddy or Mama? That that little baby, that he knows the name of Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Wouldn't be wrong thing for the first thing your child says is Jesus. That's right. Mm. Oh, how they need to know about that wonderful Savior. How wonderful He is, amen. Jesus, there ain't no better name to know. That's right. Praise the Lord. But you know what? I'm glad to tell you what. The day I got saved, that black day, was turned into a blessed day. Woo, glory. I'm going to tell you what. The thought of that day uh, when one will be taking the other left. I don't want any separation. That day is going to come. And when that trumpet calls, you know what? It would be good for you. Maybe it happened here this morning. The trumpet calls and all of a sudden we're taking a flight. Yeah. I like to look around. Mm. I like to see everybody going up, wouldn't Amen. you? Amen. Yeah. Amen. That fact is the Bible refers to this. Let me read it for you in Titus chapter 2 verse 3 I think it is. Titus chapter 2, verse 13. It says, looking, looking for that blessed hope. I'm not looking for the black day. I'm looking for the blessed hope day. Yeah. And the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. I like that, amen. Yeah. Did you know there's a blessed day coming? Amen. Mm. It's a black day for those that are lost. It's a blessed day for those that are saved. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16, it says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. With the voice of the archangel and the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive. Anybody here alive? Amen. Huh? Well, that's a pin somebody here. I don't know. And remain shall be caught up. There's that word. Caught up. We're going to be raptured up. Amen. Caught up together with them in the clouds. This is a meeting in the clouds. The second coming, Jesus coming down to earth. The rapture, when we're snatched out of here, we're meeting Jesus in the clouds. Yes. And by the way, we're meeting with the saints that's gone before us. Yeah. Woo, what a reunion. Hallelujah. Wherefore, comfort one another uh, with these words. Amen. 
Praise the Lord. You say, what's the purpose of this rapture, Brother Brad? 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 10. Here's why. It says, And to wait for the Son from heaven, whom He raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us. Notice what He's delivering us from. The wrath to come. Yeah. When this day comes, Everyone's just going to be doing their normal thing, going to work, and all of a sudden, the Bible says, like a twinkling of an eye, we're going to be taken out of here for that blessed reunion as a child of God. But there'll be folks that'll be left. That's a black day. But you know why he's snatching us out? Because his wrath is about to take place. He said he's going he's to deliver us from that. You find examples in the Bible that God gave us through the beginning of the Bible. You find that Enoch, I like Enoch, amen, I like to be like Enoch. It says, you know what, he was walking with God. Anybody walking with God? We ought to walk with him every day. Amen. And you know what, one day the Lord just said, come up hither. Just come on up here. Just stay up here. They went looking for him. They went looking for his body. They couldn't find any. What happened to him? Well, we know what happened to him. God took him. Yeah. But you know what? Enoch knew something. He knew about the judgment to come. You find the book of Jude, he says, the Lord's coming back with judgment. And by the way, Enoch also named, he had a son, he named his son Methuselah. His Methuselah is a long name. That's a long name, but it means a lot. It means when he dies, it'll come. And you know, the day that Methuselah died, clouds started to fall. Rain started to come. Do you know what? But he next to type of the rapture. He was delivered from the wrath. Well, then we find Noah. The Bible says it's like the days of Noah. Isn't that what it says? It would be like the days of Noah. They're just eating and drinking and they're doing their own thing. And, and you know what? They're just living their life just like normal. They're not concerned about anything. Not until... They saw the rain start to fall. Mm. And you know what happened seven days earlier? The Lord said to Noah and his family, He said, come on board. He said, come on board. When he got on board, you know what God did? I don't know how he did it. But he reached down there and he shut the door. Mm. And it's hard to visualize what a dark day that was, folks. Parks folks were saying, we believe you now. We didn't believe you yesterday. We didn't believe you an hour ago, but we believe you now. Let us on board. But you know what God had done? He shut the door. Right. Yeah. Noah and his family were delivered from what? The wrath to come. <clears throat> You'll even find Lot wasn't a very good example of a Christian, but you know what? You don't have to be the best Christian in the world to get to go to heaven. I want to be the best. But God's mercy and grace is far reaching. Yeah. He looked down upon Lot. He said, Lot, get out of here. He says, we're going to destroy this place. He didn't have to do that. He could have just wiped him out and left Lot. But we find out the angels came down to grab Lot. They grabbed Lot, pulled him out of there. And we know the story. Brimstone and fire came down that very day. You know what he did? He caught him away. He delivered. And that's what God has a desire to do for you and I. One day the wrath is coming. One day that day is coming. But praise God, it's a blessed day for a Christian. I'm not going to have to go through that tribulation. I'm not going to have to go through that wrath of God. He took a black day in my life and he made it a blessed day. We find today our modern um, Modern Black Friday. It's all about getting a good deal. Anybody get a good deal yesterday or Friday? Huh? I mean, you get a good deal. Uh, there's nothing wrong about going. I'm not. I'm not preaching against uh, going shopping on on Friday. Okay, it's okay. You do Cyber Monday now. Yeah, I know. I heard about that. I, we, that's great. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> we, we'll spend money we ain't got, and amen. Yeah. Buy stuff we don't need. And, that's exactly right. That's right. <laughs> But you know what? I, I looked at them. The fact is, I, I kind of ignored Black Friday this year. 
I didn't even look at any of the papers. You all get them extra papers? <laughs> and so yesterday I said, to Laura, I said, you got any of them, 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 black, them black Friday papers? And so she found a big stack like this. And you know what I found out? I missed a few things. I saw at Lowe's you can get a grill for $89. $89 for a grill is normally a $179. That seems pretty good, don't it? I don't need a grill. I saw Best Buy. You can get a 32-inch TV for $89. Hmm. Wow. I missed out. You know what I really saw? This kind of got a hold of me. Dollar General. You can get Mountain Dew there. You know I like Mountain Dew. Three pack. Three pack and 12 for eight dollars. I did the math. That's 22 cents a can. Actually, I, I think it's still going on. Honey? <laughs> I ain't going. <laughs> that's right. You know what else I found out? A lot of those things are, they call it door busters. What a name. And it goes back to breaking the door down to get to it. It's a door buster. You gotta be first. You gotta be there. And people are waiting in line. They're getting out there uh, in the night before. It's out in the cold. They're getting a little tense. They're, they're freezing. And boy, I tell you what, and it's very true, the door buster. You find that you've got to get there first. And then you get the fine print, you've got to watch out. It might say, well, quantities last. Yeah. Can you imagine getting in there, waiting all night, getting up early, it's cold. You get in there, and you get in there, and they say, well, we just sold the last one. <laughs> but you know what? As I thought about that, I want you to know we are in dark times, but I've got a good deal for you. Yeah. And by the way, you don't have to knock the door down to get it. Right. Amen. My Jesus is an open door. Amen. Amen. He said, why don't you come? And by the way, he didn't say, well, I don't in the first hundred, the first fifty. He says, whosoever amen. will come, yeah. it don't matter. Yeah. The number is, is unlimitless. Amen. Praise God. You can come to him this morning. Yeah. Back in 2000, the people there at Walmart. Walmart's a dangerous on Black Friday. Oh, yeah. And uh, they pushed and pushed, and uh, they were so anxious to get in there, they pushed all the doors down, and one of the employees there was killed, trampled. And it didn't slow them down. They just kept on going, and someone tried to help the one, and, and they got in the way, and they got injured, and the police came, and they were still trying to get in there, but their crowd was so big, and you'll find they, they were, had such a zeal to get that good deal. You know what? I don't understand it. Open the doors. Folks ought to be flooding to get the good deal. Yeah. I got the best deal, not of the day, not of the decade, and not of the century. I've got the best deal that came since the beginning of time. Amen. Yeah. It's a free gift, and Jesus Christ wants to save your soul. Yeah. Yeah. He wants your name written down the land book of life. Yeah. He didn't come to you and say, well, you've got to take this test. You've got to be so good. You've got to do this to measure up. No, he see, knows that you and I aren't any good. Our righteousness is a filthy rag. He said, you just come to me and you surrender to me of that sin, of that lie, and I'll take care of that. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, hallelujah. It's a free gift. Folks ought to be pounding the door down. They ought to be calling and saying, when can I get that? Amen. We ought to be excited about it. My son-in-law yesterday morning, or Friday morning, Friday afternoon, he said, yeah, I don't know why, but where they're at, they got to the Walmart, and uh, you got a good deal. You got trail cameras. Mm. He said there was two left, so I bought them. $33 or 
part of me said, oh, I should have sent Sister Laura to get that. <laughs> I missed out. You ever feel like sometimes you miss out? You know, I, I did miss out. In Matthew chapter 22, there's a story where Jesus, we shared last week on this, he prepared a supper. And you know what he said? He said, come. I've got it for you. It's prepared. There's nothing else needed. Amen. Praise God. You need to come. But there's a phrase that one said that said they made light of it. Yeah. Folks don't make light of this. Jesus has come. He told Noah and his family, come, come into the ark. There's security here. There's safety. And praise God they came. They didn't say, well, I'll take light of it, maybe we'll tomorrow. So many made light of it. There's a day of separation that's going to come. You don't pass up the best deal there ever was. He can take the black, he can make it a blessing. Verse 43 of our text has been know about this, that the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come. He said, we're not ever watch, would not have suffered his house to be broken up. You know, the thought of my house being broken up is an awful you know, the thought of just our gathering here this morning, the thought of being broken up and separated is an awful thought. I want everybody to go. Yeah. And when that trumpet blows and he says, come up hither, I want everyone to go. Amen. And if you've got any doubts that you're ready, don't make light of it. Right. Jesus got upset with the ones that made light of it. He shut the door. You can look in chapter 25 and you find that these ten virgins were waiting. They made light of it too. They didn't get the oil in their lamp. They didn't get what was needed. And the Bible says the door was shut. One day the door's going to be shut. There's going to be a separation. And you know, it says if you knew what watch. You know what watch we're in? We're in the last day watch. I could share with you many things this morning about it. It's very obvious. We're living in a day to day that looks like no other day. And you can see it increasing every day. This is the day the Bible has been talking about uh, where sin has gone rampant and, and uh, unnatural things are taking place and ungodliness. We shared Wednesday about unthankfulness and we shared about there's so many things where the knowledge has been increased. People are going to and fro and they have a, a knowledge of God but they don't have the power of God in them. We're living in that day to day. Part of me, my, my safe side, my wonderful side, I'm looking for Jesus to blow that trumpet. Whew. I'm going to take a flight. I'm going to go to glory. But there's, there's the other side of me, and I believe it's the right side too. It says, Lord, I hope it's not today. Yeah. I've got loved ones that need Jesus. Yeah. There might be somebody here that's not ready. There will be a day of separation. Yeah. That's not his desire. His desire that he gathers all. Let's all stand this morning. Father, help us. Lord, I'm glad the day of the trumpet is going to be a blessed day for me. But Lord, it's going to be a black day. It's because of many who put their trust in their selves, thinking they're good enough thinking that they've got enough good in their life that they'll be all right. That's not Bible. The Bible says there's none good. That's why Jesus came. He came and shed His blood to pay the price that we might trust Him and trust Him for that sin and that, that problem, that darkness that's in our life, that He might pull us out of that miry clay and set our feet upon a, a solid rock and put a new song in our life. Lord, I pray that we could talk to ourselves. You would speak to our hearts this morning. and We could say, yes, there was a day that took place in my life. There was a change that took place. Yeah. Father, if they're here this morning and we haven't had that change, 
maybe we've got religion. Oh, maybe we've got a, something, Lord, we, something that satisfies us, but it's not Bible. It's not real. We're not ready. Lord, I pray that today we'd get ready. Lord, you pray you might encourage us, Lord. We've got loved ones that aren't ready. Give us a burden, Lord, for their heart. Give us a burden that we might show them. Lord, we come here and we go places and we share with them, Lord. Our desire, we worry, we know that day is coming, the day of separation. And oh, how we want everybody to go with us. Speak to our hearts, Lord, have your way in Jesus' precious name. Amen. With every head bowed and every eye closed. One day it's going to happen. It'll happen when you think not. It will not be a, well, you got five days, you got a week, you got that. No. Your heart could stop beating today. Are you ready? Are you ready for that day? If you're ready, you ought to be the happiest person on this, this earth here. Amen. You can say, I'm ready. If you're not ready and you don't know that, you're miserable. There's not a peace. Oh, God wants to give it to you, but you've got to come. You've got to surrender self and get this self out of the way. Put Jesus on the throne. Let him have his way. Say, Lord, I can't do it. I want you to do it. You're here this morning. We forget that day's coming. We've got loved ones. We've got neighbors. And I, when I've been taken up and I look back, I sure don't want to see them left behind. Oh, Lord, speak to their hearts. Open their eyes. Help them to realize Jesus came. He came for them. takes a black day and he can make it a blessed day. I have a God that can do the impossible. Might be impossible in your mind but not with God. Give it to him. Savior Jesus Christ.